Hey, what's up? Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Simply Pod Logical, a Simply No Logical podcast. Hello, everyone. Happy Taco Tuesday. Happy Taco Tuesday to Christine. Today, we are looking at the internet's unpopular opinions. Mm, I have an unpopular opinion. Do you? Yes. Pastels are not boring. Dun, dun, dun. They're I, not boring. Isn't that, I hope that's a popular opinion. Well, I think people think pastels are boring, but I think they can be not boring if you make them not boring. Anything can be not boring if you try if you hard make enough. it exciting. Yeah, I guess that's the key. Just make something boring exciting. <laughs> I feel very distracted today because for anyone only listening to this, Christine is dressed like Taylor Swift. Who? Who? I mean, I'm sitting across from Taylor Swift right now. I'm Where did Christine go? I'm Simply Swift. <laughs> where's, that's where's my name. <laughs> By dress like, uh, we just mean you're wearing overalls. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, I'm wearing her manicure. I did her you manicure did. for her heiress tour, Manny, that she posted on all her socials. I recreated it on stream you the other did. day. It looks and very it's, nice. it's basically a Skittle Manny where every nail is a different color. So it we, represents we her, her 10 albums. Yes. Yes. So Ben tells me. <laughs> Actually, I'm, I've got an unpopular opinion too. What? So Taylor Swift just started her tour. Mm -hmm. Everyone knows I'm a Swifty. I love yeah. Taylor Swift. We know this. Mm -hmm. It's in canon. Just like how uh, the Mandalorian killed Iron Man. It's canon. Okay. Well, you can't say that because I don't know if you're telling the truth <laughs> and other people. Won't. Okay. But uh, back on Taylor Swift here. Yes. Uh, she just started her show. Her show is, she played 44 songs. Wow. Over three hour concert. Is that a lot? I like Taylor Swift. That's too much concert. So That's what, a lot of concert. What's the unpopular opinion that? So I think it's this is long? unpopular. People, people want give me all the Taylor Swift injected into my veins and like let it never end. Yeah, yeah. But I don't, I don't know. I, this is a boomer take. I think I, I, mm. we're we're going to see Taylor Swift. Yeah, in a at couple some months. point. Yeah. I would like the opening acts. I really want to see Phoebe Bridgers, but like. I don't want to, once you, like, how we got to get there early. It's like showing up to the airport. <laughs> you don't want to stand. Do we have to stand? I, I think everyone's going to be standing. Standing for three hours? What if we're just the only people sitting? Probably. Are there chairs? There must the, be chairs. We maybe, got seats, I maybe think. Maybe we're the only boomers there. But everyone's going to be standing. You're right. <laughs> oh my people God. just stand for five hours? Yeah. That's a long time. I mean, it depends. If you're really excited or you're doing something, like a lot of people stand for a lot of hours. Let's not pretend that that's not a thing. But just like, it depends on the environment. You know, if it's a chaotic environment and there's a lot of people like screaming around you, it feels longer than, you know, if you're just standing, you know, in the grocery store. Screaming hours, at least yeah. doubles the time. Yeah. If when you walked into the grocery store, there were just a bunch of adolescent girls screaming, it would mm. probably make their trip to the grocery store feel at least twice as long. Right, it's like a multiplier. Yeah, a two, a two x, x multiplier, multiplier for sure, <laughs> at least. <laughs> okay, now I'm scared, Ben. This is why I don't go to concerts. <laughs> I shouldn't be freaking you out. Let me know down below what what the ideal concert time is. I feel like an hour. How many songs is an hour? Like twelve? An hour's like an a little short. Mm, okay, an hour and a half. But you know, there's a reason why, like, when someone releases an album, it's often like an hour or less of music. Because that's just like, I give me yeah. a tight hour of music. Yeah, exactly. So a concert should be around the same, maybe a little bit longer because an encore or whatever. I think part of the issue is like, I've never been to a, a big, big stadium type show. Me neither. Like well, I, I used to go see live music more, but it was more in like mm. uh, medium sized venues or jazz clubs and things like that. Yeah, I can't remember the last time I went to a concert. Actually, I think I went to a Nickelback concert. Don't hate me. Like a long time Why? ago. Why have you never know. told me this? I feel like someone just had an extra ticket and it wasn't something I was actually interested in. What going. do you mean you think you went? Yeah, I did. This is something you no, would know. No, I did. I did. But it, it wasn't like <laughs> I was excited or I bought the ticket. Just someone had an extra and I just went. Yeah. How was it? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> but like it wasn't that big of a stadium mm -hmm. it was just kind of like average size like a hockey game size that's a good story okay sorry. all right want to look at <laughs> want to look at the internet's yes. unpopular what opinion? is the internet enough of our say? unpopular opinions what does the internet have mm. to say mm. all right first one simply kissing with your eyes open is romantic and hot basically as the title says looking into someone's eyes while sharing a kiss is great and adds a whole new level of intimacy <laughs> feels like you're being seen okay this person's a troll 
to write feels like you're being seen. Like they know they're it's funny. They're I, like, this is hilarious. I'm so intelligent. Maybe they've just never kissed anyone before. Or maybe they have and they were staring at the other person, but the other person never realized because they had their eyes closed. It's pretty terrifying. I won't lie. I've been... Sometimes, like, you, maybe you open your eyes at one point just to see what that looks like. You've never done that? <laughs> you never you never been kissing someone? Doesn't have to be me. It's okay. <laughs> and maybe you just open your eyes and be like, wow, their face is right, right there. Right there, You've yeah. never done that? I mean, like, probably. Pro- I've yeah. done that. But, like, you don't leave your <laughs> eyes open and stare. No, no. There was nothing rewarding about it. It's too close. You can't focus on something. Yeah, it, it hurts your eyes, right? It probably caused eye strain. That's to why I have and... to wear glasses now. I tried it and it ruined my vision. <laughs> I wonder if wearing glasses like improves your ability to look at the person who's this close. Like if you have glasses that help you see closer. Huh. It actually improves your ability to make out and kiss well. I don't believe that one. But well, good try. Uh, <laughs> all right. Next one. Uh, there's nothing basic or wrong about a guy putting fishing pictures in his dating profile. Fishing pics. So this what is the, this is actually the same poster as the last one. Got it. Right. He Sounds likes like staring it. while kissing, and he's mad that women don't want to date him for the fishing pictures. They don't like his fish. Right. So the the post is there's a very simple explanation as to why so many guys have fishing pictures in their Tinder profile. They fish. <laughs> they don't really have anything else. Oh. I'm not taking selfies of myself and my friends every five minutes. Besides the fishing pics, it would be really hard for me to find a picture of myself taken in the past 10 years that wasn't taken by my mother at Thanksgiving dinner. I simply just do not have any pictures of myself. Okay. I've got an idea. Uh Uh-huh. Take some pictures of yourself without fish. (laughs) For your dating profile. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like that is one situation in life where if if you're trying to you know, get dates that you have to consider getting some photos of yourself for this purpose. I like the sort of (laughs) implied resentment or misogyny of like, I'm not like those dumb women taking selfies of themselves all the time. Did you, am I reading too far into that? Did you say dumb women? Well, no, no. You just said, I'm not taking selfies 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 of myself and my friends. (laughs) Yeah. He's not talking about his buddies. (laughs) I don't don't think so. (laughs) I mean, okay. I mean. We, we missed online dating. Thank God. If you saw a picture of a guy with with a fish, uh huh, is that like an instant? I don't think so. It's an instant stereotyping. Oh, okay. <laughs> What's the stereotype that he smells like fish? Well, no, but just I don't know. Like you, people judge people on their hobbies, and yeah. uh, someone who lives in a situation or a place or has the time to do a lot of fishing, like maybe it's just not the lifestyle you live. I don't know if you're like a city girl, for example. Yeah, I, I get that's that. All. I think that's fair. But it doesn't mean they're like a bad person. <laughs> like <laughs> chill. You know, it could just be a hobbies thing. There's probably women who fish. And maybe sure. they would want to date the yeah, guy. Yeah, exactly. Fishes. Tell him that. And then they could fish together. Maybe he hasn't found any yet. I know. <laughs> There's like no women holding Because he keeps wanting to stare at women when he kisses them. <laughs> okay, stop. <laughs> this yeah take just a, t- take okay. a nice picture do you have any advice have for tip. guys i yeah. have a tip okay take a picture with your pet or if you don't have a pet, pet. borrow someone else's pet and just take a pic with he's them ta- done there you go five million dates he's already <laughs> taking a picture with a fish that's not what i mean by pet that's not the same no because some people see that and they really don't like it because it makes them uncomfortable because you may be killing the fish next you know you never know so i think that mm. that makes people uncomfortable unless they fish and like that's their sport too but assuming not because i think like most of the population probably doesn't do that as a hobby but who knows i could be wrong it's regional of course so your advice for dating profiles is pet you gotta have a pet something that looks like your companion like your buddy not a fish that's hanging by a hook if you don't have a pet you just borrow someone else's and pretend it pretend yeah Yeah. i mean you'll have to figure out that (laughs) explanation later or you get a dog just to attract women well no i don't don't do that to the dog (laughs) but you know there's nothing wrong with posing with your friend's pet and then explaining yeah it's my buddy's pet but whatever actually that this is a controversial thing i think should dating profile pictures just be of you or should they show you with your with, friends? With your friends. With your ex-girlfriend. <laughs> take, take <laughs> well, maybe not that. With your ex-girlfriend. But I think some people room. do it to prove like I have friends. I'm not a total social outcast. Like am I dating your friends? No, but weird. it's just proof that uh, people can tolerate you. 
you have been able to form some forms of. You need relation- to provide proof. You have non romantic relationships that prove people don't just hate you. I think it would be weird to stumble upon someone's picture and there's like seven guys chugging a beer in the profile picture. And I'm like, which one is the guy? You know, like, no, that's weird. Wait, what's a bigger red flag? They're all drinking in the profile or they're fishing? <laughs> which would you rather? <laughs> Oh, this guy might be an uh, alcoholic or this guy fishes a lot? Well, no. He might be like a teenager. Not a teenager. A young adult. <laughs> Sorry. Teenager. Well, we're taking The drinking age in Canada is lower. Okay, chill. Yeah, 19. <laughs> or 18 in Quebec. 18. Yeah. Um, I don't know. They're, they're both pretty <laughs> alarming, <laughs> to be honest. With the friends thing, I think you just want to make sure it's clear who... The, who you're who, dating. Who am I dating? What if they do that on purpose? They There's only a picture have pictures of 10 of guys friends. fishing. I don't know who I'm Which dating. Which one it is. Imagine 10 guys fishing. Yeah. That's the most wild. <laughs> Why 10? <laughs> because there's a lot of them. You have to figure out who's who. That's a lot of guys fishing at the same time. Yeah. I'm not interested. Can't fit 10 guys in a boat. I don't... Yeah. It's got a, you got to need a bigger boat. <laughs> okay. Can we move on to the next one? <laughs> okay, the next one. I really disliked Ryan Reynolds. Oh, no. I can't stand Ryan Reynolds. There's just something so off-putting about him. He comes across as so fake with his, ha ha, I'm so relatable because I'm so goofy and funny. He just seems like he would be so insufferable to know in real life. Mm, We can ask Blake Lively, his wife. Yeah. She, I, I really don't dislike Blake Lively. (laughs) So so maybe Ryan Reynolds is a jerk, right? What? Why? I don't, I don't know. I don't know him. Okay. But what kind of person goes on the internet unprompted? <laughs> Says I hate this to person. write a post by like a lot of people. Then I, I hate this person. A lot of people. This person do this. I don't know. I fucking hate him. I fucking hate that guy. <laughs> yeah. I bet he's really annoying and not charming. And his beautiful wife, maybe she doesn't even like him. And he's stupid. <laughs> and I people like him are stupid too. Yeah, I can yeah. see it. Understand in the context of like a conversation, maybe your friend is like, I love Ryan Reynolds. And you're like, eh, I don't love that guy. It's, it's to me, it's like the volunteering of your opinion. Like anyone should care about it. Mm-hmm. When it's I, unsolicited. Yeah. I suppose the subreddit, like the kind of the point of it is that. But I, I right, do right, think yeah. there's some more uh, broader cultural phenomena going on here mm. where people think they should just let you know their opinion all the time. And then when someone challenges them, they go, well, it's my opinion. I'm allowed to have it. Are you telling me I'm not allowed to have an opinion? Disgusting. Yeah, yeah. that's the standard response. Is that a new thing? No. Or there's just more ways of people expressing their opinions now? It's definitely not new. I've observed it in the last eight years on the internet. Um, but I don't know. I do think it's cultural because I'll see people even debate exactly this. Like I've seen it before. Well, you have people, if it's like Australian or New Zealand culture saying that like it's not correct cultural etiquette to be so brazen and like rude and like proclaiming your opinion and then they kind of have stereotypes about like americans who kind of say that they have to be able to say whatever they want at all times and no one can judge them and then there's kind of this culture clash over like well what is politeness and what should we respect and i just kind of i find it interesting that it does seem to be kind of a cultural difference but the cultural cultural difference is it's cultural and generational but i feel like all of that's kind of fading because now we're just all living on the same internet yeah. Yeah. Internet culture. Right. Okay. Anyways. <laughs> Somet- sometimes, maybe if you are just, what's the way of putting this? Let's say you see something you don't like on the internet. Mm-hmm. Unless you're having a conversation with someone or like someone asked you about someone it. Someone asked you, yeah. The idea of just being like, I don't like this. This is bad. What are you contributing? Does that like, does this make you feel better yes. about it? Yeah, it Why? does. Why? Why would that make because you feel good about just anything? just like when you were seven years old, picking on the kid who was wearing overalls in school made you feel better. I did not do that. Oh, sure, Ben. Ben was definitely not a bully. <laughs> Why do you think I was a bully? <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't know. I mean, all kids are cruel. I yeah, feel that, like. that is yeah. true. And they, and they feel better. It makes them feel superior and it, it lets them get something out because they're having a little temp, temper tantrum. And that's all it is, just an adult form on the internet. Mm-hmm. I think it will, overalls are pretty cool. I mean, I think I look pretty stupid, but, I think but you whatever. Look, you look You're pretty entitled awesome. to your opinion. <laughs> I kind of want to start wearing overalls. Now. What? Would you, really? Would you be upset about that? I don't, I have no opinion. I'm going to reserve. You have no opinion? I'm, I'm asking my, for your opinion. I don't want to give you my opinion. Okay, no, be honest. Do you think I oh, look shit. stupid in overalls? Um, It depends what color. 
I feel like the light Denim. color would not work on you. It would look uh, too like dad, but like maybe a dark overall could that's, work. That's kind of my a thing. A black jean overall could actually look cool. Mm. Black jean? Yeah, I kind of want that. I think I we just have different overalls. I like the light jean look. That's really? kind of what makes me dad aesthetic. Though, I look I like a farmer. Don't lie. <laughs> what What would you farm? Simply farming. Are you a chickpea Oats. farmer? Oat Oats. farmer. Oat farmer. farmer. That's a good answer. All right, you want to move on? Okay, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Ryan Reynolds. No, I like him. He's funny. <laughs> uh, QR codes. QR code menus should be in addition to a physical menu, not instead of them. I'm noticing more and more that I have to ask to be given a physical menu when I go out to eat. One physical menu per sitting, uh, per person sitting to eat should be the standard at a restaurant. If they want to also offer a QR code to bring up a digital menu, that's cool. Even though it doesn't happen super often, it really irks me when people give me attitude just for asking for a real menu. Okay, boomer. A boomer wrote this. Is it? I kind of, I agree with this, I think. You're a boomer. Is it proof? Precisely my point. Proof Ben is a boomer. Yet again, another piece of evidence. You know what? I'll say it depends on the kind of restaurant. But yeah, the idea that I need to... So how often a menu changes, I think, Mm. is actually an important factor here. Yeah. But I still think if I'm going to a nice sit-down restaurant, I don't want them to be like, uh, take out your phone on the table and point it at this thing and Mm. you can all... Like, no, I'm I'm there for a sort of, there's a bit of an experience that comes down, comes along with like the sitting down to a nicer dinner where I don't want to have to have, everyone has their phones out, I think. So I, I was going to disagree with you until you put it that way. Because I do think if the environment, the atmosphere of the restaurant is that kind of chill, somewhat romantic, relaxed, and uh, a little bit more high end, I guess, Mm. um, then I could see your point because otherwise they're like asking you to take out your phone. But this person didn't specify and they're kind of saying everywhere, every restaurant that you go out to eat should uh, always have a physical menu. And I disagree with that because I think it's like, first of all, like you said, if a restaurant changes their their me- menu items frequently, it's such a waste of paper, yeah, time, and effort. Printing. Or like then the menu's all wrong and then the server has to constantly be like, actually, we don't have that anymore. But, you know, we can't update these cards because we got them laminated yeah, last but, week. But so. this, this has worked for a long time. Do we really yeah, think it's that okay. wasteful? And that was years ago. And now we're in the digital age of innovation, baby. Get on board. <laughs> Maybe I'm a boomer. If you are sitting down to eat, I think yep. physical menu is the norm. If I'm walking into a place and looking up at a menu on a wall... I don't I don't need a, a physical menu card. Okay, good point. Because I do want to consider people who don't have phones and who may be dining alone, which they need something to be able to, to access. So there should always be at least some copies of a physical menu, but they don't have to be like given out by default to reduce space. Or you could also have something written on the wall so that someone could just refer to that. You need to give people all the available options, but I don't think by default every restaurant has to give every single person who comes in a physical menu. I still think that should be the default. A physical menu always into the future? Well, no, I'm not talking <laughs> about the for future. the rest of time, Ben? <laughs> ben. Right. On the moon? When <laughs> people moon. are having dinner on the you moon? You think they need a physical menu? <laughs> not on the moon. On the moon, I'll use my phone. Will but your phone work on the moon? <laughs> one other factor I feel like I need to mention. Okay. How messy the food is. How messy the food if is. I'm, if I'm eating a bunch of oh. chicken wings, my hands are covered in hot sauce. Okay. You don't look at your phone after not, you've ordered. Maybe I want to order again. Why? Sometimes you're double hungry. Okay, well, you got to think ahead. You got to say, you got to calculate how gotta, hungry am I? I got to think into the future. In order accordingly. <laughs> Don't go back to your phone. Okay. This is more normalized though, right? The QR code, yeah. Yeah, like like if Seinfeld was still coming out today, there could be an episode about QR code menus or something. Yes. <laughs> okay, let's move on. Okay. Uh, the world starts too early. <laughs> I get that generally humans naturally wake up when the sun humans comes up. Humans wake up at what time? This person is a <laughs> is, robot. This was written by AI. They remained a machine. So that's between seven and nine. So I get why people wake up at that time. But why does anything in the world that isn't governed by the sun, <laughs> like farming or fishing. Fishing! Why does any of that happen before 11 a.m.? Like school and work. It's crazy. We could choose to all sleep in every day. But as a society, we've actively chosen to start our day stupidly early. I bet that's why we're so miserable all the time. 
There's a lot of projection going on here. <laughs> Why is everyone who works at a desk waking up before 8 a.m. just to answer emails and type up reports or whatever these people do? Why do we make 13-year-olds wake up at 6 a.m. to start learning stuff at 9 a.m. or earlier? Maybe I'm just lazy, but I don't think anything should happen before 11 if it doesn't have to and isn't governed by the sun. <laughs> Things should stay open later as well. Our whole schedule as a society should shift forward a few hours. The sun, our Lord and Savior. God bless the sun. Is this all relative that like if everyone just started sleeping until 11, though? We extend our not, day three hours a, later. 9 a.m. Yeah. would just start feeling exactly. early. And then you'd have someone like this writing like, why do we wake up at 9 a.m. to get to work at 11? Yeah. So I agree it's all relative, but it also is trying to maximize the hours of time in the day. So if we all started at 11, which is like approximately three hours later than the average person, let's say, works, we'd all be working three hours later. The only so, thing in here I agree with, though, is the school thing. Because I think mm. aren't, there's some... There's some truth to, isn't it like when teenagers, teenagers need a lot of sleep or something? Yeah, but you could go to bed earlier, but we just, di we didn't. Yeah, but when school starts, if you have like pr uh, before school activities like mm. band or sports or something, and you're waking up at five to get to school at far. seven. Or you live far because you go to French. It margin. is pretty fucked up that it's normalized, uh, I think, for teenagers to get to school that early. And maybe it's just so it lines up with, you know. Parents with their parents exactly so their parents have enough time to drive them or get them ready to school before they have to go to work and then it also allows kids to get home earlier i the school i went to in high school was like we got off at three and then that way you could go to your part-time job if you had a part-time job which i did which started at four yeah so, me too yeah uh but this person would say well that's garbage you know and you shouldn't have to do either of those things you shouldn't have to wake up early for school or go to a part-time job but i don't know man that's just life <laughs> Is it? But we can question it. We can question it. Yeah, sure. We can argue with it. We can have an opinion Is about it. Is this an unpopular opinion? The Well, I think a lot of people most would, people would, would agree. Yeah, sure. I'd rather sleep in. But let's say the whole world decided, okay, we're all tomorrow, starting tomorrow, we're all going to wake up yeah. three hours later. Then we would just all be working till like 9 p.m. I would, So at work, when at the our desk job, we had sort of the option there was a range in which we could work, right? Between six and six is when the union yeah. allowed you to choose when you want to work. So yeah. you needed to do your seven and a half hour work day. Mm -hmm. uh, the, your lunch break too. Um, so like I would, I chose to work nine to five, but a lot of people would work seven, seven to, to three. three. And, and I was working seven to three most of the time. Yeah, you were going to yeah. work like two hours earlier. But that, I found that a lot of people did choose that kind of You're seven right. to three option because rush hour is trash downtown Ottawa. And maybe this is similar where other mm -hmm. people live in cities. And for people with kids, it was way more convenient for them for the reasons we already explained. Like they wanted to get their kids ready to school, go to work. They, maybe they drive them. Their, their school starts early. And then picking them up from daycare for younger kids after. So yeah, the seven to three seem to be pretty common where i worked for other people and the nine to five was way less common <laughs> that was like ben but whenever i got in at nine i was like the people have been here for two hours <laughs> did they do any work ben like yes are they working from seven to nine are you working from nine to eleven i've i found so for me are you I, working from three to five? So that's the right way of asking that <laughs> and i would argue that i got more productive as the way day went on because i feel like i'm the later in the day it gets, the more productive I, th I am a slow starter. Yeah. So for me, like the idea of coming in very early to work, I probably just would have been very unproductive. I could have done it mm -hmm. and I just wouldn't have gotten a lot of work done. But I guess some people must be the opposite. I just well, can't relate. No, some people don't have a choice because they have families or lives that force them to do that early period. I don't okay, think but, it, but ignore, I, I had a choice and I just chose to do earlier. Pretend, pretend their whole purpose in life is labor <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, with their job. Okay. The people coming in early, like there must be people who are just like, I'm a morning person. I like starting mm. and getting work done right away, right? Yeah. I just don't get that. So when I went in early, I actually preferred how quiet it was at mm. seven and it was still dark outside in some, most seasons in Canada. It was dark. Like <laughs> when, winter, I, when I, yeah, I would walk to dark. work and it was still dark and I kind of liked it because no one was bothering me. No one was calling me. I could genuinely sit down and read emails, sip my tea and have a little bit of a calm before the storm of the 9am people came in and then meetings began.
So I preferred that kind of just easing into it. And then you get to leave early or what feels like early. You're still there. For you the still have a lot. Time, when you get out of work at 3 p.m. It's great. It feels like it's still the day, right? Yeah. Whereas me, yeah. like I, So I feel the exact opposite. Like once those morning people left at 3 p.m., that's when I got really down to business. The meetings were when over. When you got down to business or that's when you did nothing? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's when I got my... In a in an eight hour work day, <laughs> I would get more work done in the last two hours than probably yeah. the other six hours of that day. Honestly, yeah, I don't think the like the employer, they don't care as long as you get it done at some point. It depends in the day, on the know? yeah. Depends on for us that was the case. Yeah, as long yeah. as you're getting your work done, I think. Um, yeah, but then I would get out in the winter and it would be like pitch black. Yeah, which is really depressing. Yeah. I remember that happened to Why us. Why do we too. live here? I don't know. Every, like, it felt like no matter what end, whether you go early or late, like you're kind of screwed because it's like pitch black, and then it's very depressing to look out the windows. Mm-hmm. Anyways, that's Moving that's on. just life. Okay, what's the next one? Uh, being naked in front of your pets is strange. <laughs> Me personally, I think of my pets as people with their own what? personalities. Me too, actually. But them seeing me naked is just weird. I don't think it really matters to the animal. It's just weird. <laughs> <laughs> it's very uh eloquent well thought out position it's just it's weird. just weird it's just weird okay great is it weird do you ever think about being naked in front of the pets i mean i don't know like i guess they look at you but they're like always looking at you kind of like with an empty head they're always like hello <laughs> they kind of look at you weird yeah, they but they're always at looking you. at me weird you know? but they're always naked so it's, it's kind of equal well they, yeah they have a lot of hair yeah i've got some hair not as much as Xyler or Enchi. I don't know. Is it any different than like having like a baby around? <laughs> <laughs> like do people... Would you feel weird about being naked in front of a baby? Well, I mean, yes, because it's like not my baby and I don't know. <laughs> like, yeah, for oh, sure. Okay. I would, yes, I would probably not want to be naked around anyone's random baby. No so offense. The, uh, one factor here is, is the animal a threat at all? No. Because what if you have like a pet monkey? Okay. <laughs> what? Well, yeah. Some people have pet monkeys. I would not be naked around a monkey. I don't think that's what this poster is referring to. What do you think like it's referring to? Like they're just like cats and dogs. I wouldn't want to be naked with a, with a Rottweiler, Pitbull. Would you want to be clothed near a Rottweiler? If, if you have an animal that could actually pose a mm. real threat to you in a physical altercation... Then I know everyone says yeah. my my Sally Pitbull would never <laughs> okay. hurt anybody, but that animal was like bred to be a fucking monster. No one should have those pets. Hot t- unpopular opinion from Ben. Apparently, I do not think people should have pit bulls or any. You should not have a pet that is capable of like killing another small animal or child. How about that? It's really sad. I don't know. Like I mean, I'll just occasionally hear about it. I don't know the statistics or anything, but. Any one situation like that is really fucking sad. So Anyways. I wouldn't want I wouldn't want to be naked Would around you, an okay, animal. Okay, but like, like that. I yes, clothing technically does provide you a little bit of protection, especially overalls. Overalls. Well, it's like getting really in a fi- getting in a fight with anything. Like a any if, animal. If an intruder teeth. came in and you had to get into an altercation, you'd rather not be naked. That's terrifying enough. But uh, like, I really also don't want to be naked. For, that's why I don't sleep naked. Just in case I have to because defend us from an intruder. Oh my, oh, my God. Okay. All right. Okay. Let's move on to the next one. <laughs> okay. Uh, people are so dr- dramatic about not wanting to socialize. Dramatic. What? I get it, bro. You're an introvert. <laughs> no one fucking cares. Okay. If your family or roommates have people over uh, and you don't at least come out to say hi, you're being rude. People act like small talk is worse than cancer. Like, bro, chill the fuck out. You're just talking about the weather with your coworker. It's not that bad. <laughs> I love how specific He's these so examples mad. are. Talking to people and socializing is a part of life, and it's a very important part of life, actually. Mm-hmm. The same people who complain when the cashier tries to have small talk with them will scan the groceries will one day wonder why he has no friends. Like bro. Like bro. Reddit might be the only place that I've seen the term hypersocial freak used before. 
There's an entire massive subreddit dedicated to teaching people how to make eye contact. Is there? Have you seen this? Hypersocial I, I freak? I mean, you could make... Oh, I thought you meant there's a whole forum for teaching people how to make well, eye contact. That or the term hypersocial freak, which I'm assuming is know. used by introverts. To it, it makes sense, explain. though, that there's a lot of people who, are very, who use Reddit a lot who are more introverted and don't yeah. want to... I mean, be social it's a self-selected with... population. Yes, There's no surprises it. here. <laughs> uh huh. Do you think people who are introverted though are really going around and like announcing it? Announcing? Well, like no, because that doesn't make any sense. That's like antithetical to being an antisocial. If you're, <laughs> Why would if... you go to people and be like, "I hate you, all of you"? No, that's but, an extroverted thing to do. But is it different on the internet as opposed mm. to real life? Like, if yeah. if you're an introvert, is being very. Uh, forthcoming and uh sharing your opinion like is that is it not really being extroverted if you're just like sort of typing it in a forum that is a good point i think the medium in which you communicate your opinions or thoughts or just anything can really change here whether or not you can classify someone as an introvert as an extrovert because yes we're talking about like in a public space if someone were just to go like i don't know say a bunch of shit to a crowd of people that's not likely to be an introvert, right? But on the internet, an introvert could do the exact same thing, but just be typing in a forum. So, and maybe it's more likely that there mm -hmm. are, I mean, it could be extroverts too, but yeah. Can I just um, say like someone like this, l let me give you a little perspective. When I first- You're an extrovert. I think so. We did this quiz I don't know. once. We like, did this in quiz. In some ways. A little bit. It took me a long time to sort of realize and I think be properly sympathetic to you being an introvert in some ways am i dramatic about it you're not dramatic about it but there, <laughs> there used be? to be times where i felt like you were kind of being so withdrawn you were like being rude almost rude yeah. to people uh -huh. and i used to be like why are you doing this and like i it would kind of upset me <laughs> and i think it's only over time and from talking about it that i sort of realize it comes from your own mm -hmm. you know you have your anxieties or you're introverted and like I think for a lot of people, it comes from a very real place of it's, it's not like I'm just choosing to be rude. It's, yeah, it's not a, it's not like a choice thing, right? It's just like almost like a compulsion to withdraw or just whatever it is to get out of the situation. That, and, and this is people... even, even setting aside the aspect of like people who have like legitimate or uh, more serious forms mm -hmm. of mental issues or trauma or yeah whatever, if, if we're not talking about that and we're just talking about like generalized introverted behavior yeah. which is not necessarily related to mental health but it's just you know mm -hmm. there's like two groups of people that psychology decided there's introvert and extrovert and maybe some people kind of a little bit of mm -hmm. both but, but yeah so i just not to sympathize with this person but i do understand why people who don't feel introverted at all i think have trouble understanding why like just making small talk with someone but that's not what this person is saying oh sorry they are saying that but they're also saying that introverts are so dramatic about it as if they're saying like it would be awful and i would i could never or something well i think their issue and maybe there's some legitimacy if you know introverted people and they just won't shut the fuck up about how introverted they are that is annoying I, I can't picture that though. I don't really. Like, that doesn't make that, sense. That, that's not my experience. Like maybe on the internet, like they're just like, I hate parties. Here's a four page essay about why parties are terrible. Yeah, that, that, that sounds it? pretty obnoxious to yeah. me if you're doing that. But that's just, the, this goes back to what we were talking about earlier. Just the annoying person on the internet. It doesn't really matter whether <laughs> yeah. they're introvert doesn't, or extrovert. Right. Just nothing like, to do shut up. Introvert. Like no one asked, you know? <laughs> yeah, they're introverted and annoying. And annoying. So there's a difference. Not all introverts are annoying. <laughs> but some introverts can be annoying. <laughs> mm, what's the Venn diagram? There? Yeah. Uh, moving on. Anyways, I think I should be more dramatic. Should you? About being an introvert. No, you shouldn't. <laughs> Just talk to somebody. I'm talking to you right now. Yeah. <laughs> Got him. You, you like only talk Got to him. me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking to like tens of thousands of people. Hey guys, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, oh, oh, here's a fun one. Bed frames are a waste of money. And not having one shouldn't be a bad thing. <gasps> it's an Ikea competitor. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> no, they don't want to sell you anything. They just want their bed on the floor. Okay. Their post is really long and gives their justifications. I, I don't really care. <laughs> Matt, should, you gotta read their opinion. Should, is it... What, do you think there's an argument that a mattress should just be on the floor? What would you think mm. of someone who doesn't have a bed frame? 
I would assume that there's a financial reason that prevented them from getting a bed frame. Interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, which is definitely a whole different bucket. Because you can get mattresses from donation programs. I don't know if they always provide bed frames. Probably not. Yeah. Okay, let, let's take out the financial factor. And just assume it's like that's not They the are issue. choosing to, to not have a bed frame. Maybe they're just like a 27-year-old guy who doesn't give a exactly. shit. <laughs> like, I think what immediately like, comes what? to most people's mind is young man who doesn't care. Who has right? a fish in his Tinder profile. Yeah, he's got fish in his profile. <laughs> <laughs> he's mad at introverts uh... okay maybe we should clarify what is a bed frame so a right because i feel like some what? people have a different idea some people think you mean the headboard some people think you mean like the metal piece underneath that just lifts it up and for others it just means like wood slats underneath just to give it some stability we have to define this we're just talking yeah. about anything that lifts the mattress off the floor okay i just wanted to clarify because yeah. i don't know if in some cultures like bed frame means something totally different to people like we're not talking about a fancy headboard we just mean like a almost like a box spring is another word for it that that goes under oh, the mattress yeah, yeah. that isn't comfortable but it's just like it raises the mattress up and it also has some like kind of ventilation technically because it has a, a open space under it so that your mattress can kind of breathe top to bottom hmm. at least that's what i understand bed frames their practical purpose for there's also cosmetic purposes because the bed frame itself can provide like a leather edge or some metal construction that like looks nice and it's attached to the headboard. When I found this post too, I saw a few comments saying, if your mattress is directly on the floor, there's a risk, I guess, even you're in a moist environment mm -hmm. that it could actually lead to like mold and like sanitary reasons why you don't want a mattress just sitting on the ground too. Mm -hmm. That sounds plausible to me, but I don't really know. Mm -hmm. I guess the only, the only counter argument I could see is I think I would rather my mattress be on the floor than on a really terrible bed frame. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I used to have like, a, I just bought like a cheap metal one from like Walmart or something at one point when I was like living the student life. And that thing would just like move around and squeak. The springs, yeah. Yeah. It was, it was, well, yeah, not even the, the springs. It was like bad. the metal of the, the, frame the frame itself was just so bad. <laughs> <laughs> that it is like i think at one point i did just put the mattress on the floor instead of that <laughs> okay. so i i was that you guy were, at were one that point guy, I, yeah. for a brief period of time i used to sleep on the couch a lot i would just not go to bed on the couch i would just sleep on my couch a was lot was it more comfortable i would just fall asleep watching tv in the middle of the night it sounds wonderful it was very healthy yes um but this person is saying bed frames are a waste of money so I do consider them to be looking at it from a more at economical... At least a financial fact. <laughs> However, in my... I mean, I can't remember the last time we went shopping for bed frames, but I thought, like, the mattress is usually what's more expensive than the frame. In my recollection, like, when I was a student and, like, you could buy, like, a package of the, the mattress and the frame, the frame was usually far less than the mattress, depending on what type of mattress you wanted. I think both can... There's a huge range for both, right? I guess, You yeah. can get a really nice mattress that's, like, a stupid amount of money. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I agree, though, that, like, yeah, you... Could, but again, a really cheap bed frame kind of sucks. I guess a cheap mattress Kind of suck sucks, too. too. But yeah. the bed frame, if you just exclude the cosmetic uh features and we're only talking about like practical ones that don't really like look like anything mm -hmm. i don't think they're that expensive relative to mattresses what if you just got a bunch of like milk crates flip them upside down that could be like the board or that could be your your bed frame i feel like that's not a bad idea i mean th there's no springiness I'm full though. of good ideas there's no give but, but the mattress okay. gives you the give yeah but so do bed frames right i feel like they kind of do I don't know. It's been a long time since I've investigated. How much is a banana anyway? $10? Okay. Next one. All right. Uh, next one. Most countries would absolutely crush a classic zombie apocalypse. With media, sirens, etc., almost everybody would stay indoors. Uh, also, there are plans to support the population food-wise. Most zombies are weak, stupid, and have no <laughs> arms. What? Modern military could clear every city within a couple days. And in the countryside, most villages probably wouldn't even be affected. I think it's unrealistic that in most movies, society collapses immediately. I think it's unrealistic that uh, we can support the population food-wise right now. Never mind a zombie yeah. apocalypse. <laughs> like, sir, where have you been? <laughs> yeah, there are people hungry now. Sir, have you seen <laughs> any news at all from anywhere in the world? <laughs> I think it's... Yeah, I... 
yeah, I don't know where this person's coming from that when tr- railroad workers go on strike, mm-hmm. it's like, f- fuck, like one cog in the machine can completely I- interrupt the way of life for like an entire country, right? So the idea of like there not being any interruption in that continuity when you have a zombie outbreak seems pretty implausible to me. I mean, yeah. fucking even like when COVID first happened, you couldn't buy toilet paper for a while. Yeah. I, I would think a zombie outbreak would be at least... A little bit worse. A little bit worse. A little bit worse. He's not wrong about people staying inside though, like the beginning of COVID. <laughs> it made me think of that. I'm like, we do have some training. No, you but know, people would be like, inside. I have my freedom. I don't have to stay inside. That's true. They would turn into the zombies. They would go first. And then and you'd, it'd all be the worse zombies would just have red hats wandering America. <laughs> With apparently no arms. <laughs> With no scenario. arms. Yeah, why don't they have arms? <laughs> There would be people, you're not wrong, a small section of society would be like, fuck this, I'm going outside on day one, yeah. and then they would get bit, and then it would make it worse for everyone else, because now there's just more zombies, Yes, but you know, this is just what happens. Those are people, human yeah. nature. I do <laughs> find it interesting, though, could there be a, like a movie that's about a zombie apocalypse that is way, because th- this person does make an interesting point that most zombie movies just sort of really quickly go from... Zombie outbreak happens, society's it's fucked. fucked. Yeah. I there should be huh. more zombie movies about with, with a good people ending. putting up a good resistance to the zombies. And beating the zombies. I don't even know if they have to win the end, but I just I wanna see that actual I huh. don't want it to immediately jump to now we're in a world where zombies have taken over. Show me how the military fought back. And yeah, would the military just be able to wipe out zombies? <laughs> Yeah. Right? I mean, I think people wouldn't want to watch that content as much because it's not as exciting because we're all so fucked up that we love a good dystopia. And also people might find what you're suggesting or this poster is suggesting to be even more unrealistic and almost like propaganda for the military because it's like, look how great our military is. They saved us in like two days against the zombies. I think people would respond a little strangely to that. But I see, I hear you just in principle that we don't really have... The opposite. We just have like the absolute worst fucking outcome. You're right. The sort of dystopia adds that layer of that is the sort of trope or the the stereotype of what the zombie movies are about. They're not really about the zombie outbreak. It's more about how society has collapsed. Mm-hmm. But I still think like for someone to have a different take on zombies, it could be more of that. Like, what would a world look like where there is a more active, uh, you know, push and pull between zombies and people? It would not look like The Last of Us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or The Walking Dead, or any of these shows. Yeah. So when The Walking Dead did a, they announced they were doing a prequel show at one point, mm. and I was actually interested. I'm like, oh, this could be interesting. It shows how the outbreak happened. Outbreak happens immediately back to like just zombies have taken over world, right? Like, I feel like people would be actually interested in a show or a movie that focused more on the initial what days. it would look like in those initial yeah, days. Yeah, that's what I want. I want the history. Don't lesson. give me 28 days later. Give, give me 28 me, days give prior. Me 28 minutes imagine, after. Imagine. Okay, new series. Uh-huh. 28 days prior. And it's about before <laughs> it's the outbreak. It's just people going to work. Nothing's wrong. <laughs> no, nothing 20, is wrong. No, yeah. but you get to see like little glimpses of the mutation or whatever it is that's going to like, you know, cause the big outbreak. That's what I want to see. Monkeys cause the outbreak. Okay, but I want to see what were they doing? What kind of bananas were they eating? Were they having a good time? Were they plotting? You know, like I want to see. Do you remember the start of 28 Days Later? Vaguely, yeah. Yeah, so it's like the rage virus. So these these environmentalist like PETA type group goes to free these monkeys from being experimented on. Doctor's like, like, don't 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 do do it. it. Like they've got the virus. Yeah. And they let them go and the, the monkey spreads the zombie virus. Okay, more of that. I want to see that. You want to see more, like, more bro- of what? Broken the, the 28 days prior. Yeah. No, I want to see right after, not a month okay, before. Okay, whatever. All right, next <laughs> 28 question. 28 days prior. Uh, spaghetti are the worst kind of noodles. I just don't get why some spaghetti is so popular. Unlike others, they're hard to pick up, can't really hold much sauce, and are way too thin and long. I'm getting <laughs> anger issues. If I only think about picking up spaghetti with a fork... And losing two thirds of my scoop. I'm so mad. Every time someone invites me over to have something to eat with them, I'm praying that it's not spaghetti. <laughs> Just say a little prayer. Even though I think they're D tier, most people think they're S tier noodles. Spaghetti tier. S. Thanks for reading. 
I just had to write this down. Somewhere. This person just had to give. They had their, to yeah. share this opinion. <laughs> well, this is unpopular opinion. We understand the irony, but still. R- read the edits. They said you have to read that. Oh, I'm sorry sp- for saying spaghetti or noodles. I didn't know it was a big deal for some people. <laughs> Also, I'm able to hold and use a fork for spaghetti. I just don't like to eat pasta that You way. know people got mad at Poster in the comments. This Sh- is a, It's a skill sh- issue. Shaming them for like poor skill or yeah. like how dare they say spaghetti or noodles. You, you just have bad spaghetti eating technique. Yeah. What's wrong with saying spaghetti or noodles? What is, it's pasta, right? Is pasta not a noodle? Can a noodle well, not be a pasta? It's a noodle. What's the difference between pasta and noodle? Uh, noodles are more translucent sometimes, right? Like a, <laughs> right? I don't know. Like a lo mein noodle? What's it? That, that's not <laughs> that the same thing as, as pasta, because pasta is more like a potato carb or something. Are these things not overlap, though? Can a pasta not be a noodle? That is a good point. Spaghetti I is noodle like, shaped. I feel like there is a point here. Like, technically, pasta is a different composition than noodle, but we just refer to a lot of pasta as noodles. Maybe we're wrong. I don't, think, I don't know. No, I feel like, like there could be something there, but I don't know. Maybe enough. when you think of noodles, you're usually thinking like rice noodles yes, or egg noodles. That's what I meant, like a vermicelli or something. But why Why is pasta not also a noodle? No, it's a pasta. But spaghetti is like, has Noodly. all the properties of a noodle. Spaghetti looks like a noodle, but it's deceptive because it's a pasta. So it should stop looking like a noodle and just be penne because it's easier to eat. <laughs> okay. Sp- spaghetti isn't S tier pasta, right? It is annoying, but that's why kids love it. Kids like it because yes. it's annoying? that's why spaghetti and... Okay, I'm just talking about my childhood here, but I always had like spaghetti with yeah. tomato sauce because it was very easy to make, but it was more fun for kids to eat because they're all like, ooh, look at the noodles. <laughs> <laughs> kids love playing with spaghetti. I'm making fun of myself, okay? Like, <laughs> it's just like kind of a stupid thing to try and eat, but it's fun. Okay. Yeah. I don't... Uh, maybe... But as an adult, if I had a choice, I would choose something like penne because it's a little, a little cleaner to eat than spaghetti. But I'm also like, I don't care if someone serves me spaghetti, I'll fucking eat it. But just give me a napkin, please. As a kid, my memory is like you'd have to chop up the spaghetti. You, what? Oh, I had to add them in the pack. <laughs> like in the pack? The pre-made pack of spaghetti. No, there's no chopping involved. Pre-made Wait, pack? Wait, you, you had real Are you pasta? talking cup of noodles? No. I'm talking like there was like a a brick shaped pack that came with preset sizes or lengths of spaghetti. Yeah, and then of you course. just you just drop them in the, the yeah, boiling yeah, yeah. water. But then if you're a small child, maybe your parents oh. like cut it up for you. I wasn't that so small. So you didn't have to spin it no, on the fork. There was no cutting in my household. We just ate the slurped it all up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> slurped up the spaghetti. <laughs> okay. Okay. So maybe the answer is spaghetti is not a noodle at all. It's a pasta. Got him. Then it's just the worst kind of pasta. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, two more. Uh, a lot of the burnout in modern day white collar jobs is not from being overworked, but from suppressing one's authentic self to conform with the culture. I'm what? not saying that there's a good chunk of people who are not overworked to the end of their capacity, but I've noticed days where I've had to work not more than four to five hours. I still end up feeling exhausted at the end of the day. I could attribute the exhaustion only to the disingenuous and inauthentic interactions that one must endure as part of falling in line with expectations from management. This is a little strangely written, but I think it's the idea of, are people burned out because they're working too much, or are they burned out because they feel unfulfilled from their labor. in the work they're doing, from their labor? Hmm. A think- little bit of both? Yeah, I yeah. think both of these things can be true and in combination makes it even work. worse, right? If you're overworked in a job, that also doesn't bring you any joy. Yeah, if, you, will... if you hate your job, you will be more unhappy with the work that you do, for sure. Mm-hmm. And how many people really have a job that is feels authentic and fulfilling and great? And a it's... very small proportion of people. Yeah, most and... people do not get the privilege of working at least like for a career's length of time in a job that they really love. So. And even if you really love it, it's still a job and it's going to have some qualities and there will be some times where it doesn't feel great or it still feels hard or exhausting, right? Yeah, but like the people... You, like you, you, you love a lot of the work you do. <laughs> Calling me out here. That's, that's awesome, right? And you work very hard and you work a lot. 
you uh-huh. still get burnt out or tired it's, it sometimes. It can still be exhausting, but I also am very acutely aware of suggesting something like that or explaining that or, you know, complaining. That's yeah, how people might yeah. put it. Is really um, out of touch and does not make others feel good who have to work in a job that they don't love because all they would want and all they dream for is like, I wish I had a job that I love to do. Mm -hmm. And so to hear someone who's working in a situation that, and you're aware that they love what they do to hear them say they're exhausted is like, well, it must be fucking nice. Yeah. Yeah. So, but something could be obnoxious, but also still true. That even, right. that but even the, if but, you loved what you're but doing. That, that's why yeah. I think it's important, going back to the beginning here, that, you know, there's some opinions or feelings you may have that are better off just sitting with you, you know, because <laughs> yeah. you, it's maybe not worth it to like upset others mm-hmm. and to also kind of understand the context in which you are sharing an opinion or a thought. Well put. I think we could just wrap that there. <laughs> All right. Last one. Ending a little heavy here. Oh, great. <laughs> Instead of the death penalty oh God, for prisoners, <laughs> they should be given the choice of being a lab rat. What? The death penalty, is, as is, is quite a tricky subject as many people think it's inhumane or barbaric. So it's not a surprise for me that when I say it is something I can understand, I get booed out of the place. Uh, but when I say my alternative would be I am called sadistic, mm-hmm. I think that when someone gets the death penalty... Uh, the lawyers or the one penalized should be able to have the choice, which is either death or volunteering to be a lab rat for the sake of Wait, science. The lawyers would choose on their behalf? The lawyers or the person accused? Yeah, that, that's a big that, difference. That is a big difference. <laughs> Go on. Uh, many times when a new medicine is being made and passes the animal tests, it takes an awfully long time for it to go into human testing. Uh, although I am not that well read or learned in the matter, I think instead of volu- <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about, but, but here's my opinion. <laughs> I think instead of volunteers, scientists should just use death row inmates, oh. but not just in the development of new medicine, but in any scientific field where human test subjects are needed to provide better data and is dangerous. If the research is proven to pass the animal testing phase, then the researchers can apply for getting a death row inmate as their new test subject. <laughs> Uh, I gave my example with medicine because it seemed to be easier to perform without risking the chance of the inmate losing, getting loose, but it is the matter of infrastructure, really. This is a depressing, boring dystopia. Mm. And this says a lot more about the people who would agree with this uh, punishment, the option, as opposed to the hypothetical death row inmates consenting to this. Because ultimately, when I see this, I see this as there is no consent in this case. If Poster is suggesting that the death row inmate could choose between uh, being executed or being a lab rat, that's not a choice. That is uh, a choice made under duress, which is not a choice, which kind of means that the person imposing that duress choice is criminal or at least ethically questionable so Very us as the society or poster here who's suggesting this is the fucked up person yeah. <laughs> suggesting like hey you we're gonna put you through this or say or even putting it to them as like they had a choice is fucked up because they don't have a choice if you if you're only given the options of like die or do this lab rat testing then what are you gonna do yeah if we actually entertained this scenario i think people just most people have an impulse for Mm self-preservation. So they would choose to be the lab rat, I think. Yeah. So you're right. This is more of a reflection on a society that would do this or engage in this or consider this to treat people as um, experiments. And then who's doing the testing? Because in this situation, the, the poster never really considers like what scientists would agree to this. It's kind of like, I remember learning about this in, in um, school, but the executioner in states where the death penalty is legal. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of interesting stories you can find of people who like worked as the executioner or on the doctor team if it was lethal injection. Mm-hmm. And those people have a very complex choice in going into that line of work. And no one really considers them, like the humans doing the executing, hmm. in the fact that this this penalty of like uh, death uh, exists. So I'd ask the same question here. Are you considering the scientists in this scenario? And are you going to have people who like refuse to do this? You yeah, would. I would hope most reasonable people would have serious ethical 
concerns Con- issues with this. with this doing it at all yeah yeah huh interesting <laughs> is this thoughts too much of a bummer like, to end on? i mean okay i there are people who've absolutely questioned this before i don't think this is like that rare for someone who's not educated in criminology or the justice system to like consider why don't they just do that you know so sometimes it's not about just like shaming that person and being like well you're horrible but just kind of explaining other things that maybe they didn't consider mm-hmm. kind of like you know the, what if the it's just what if what if the experimentation is just like here's a new allergy medicine we just want to know <laughs> if trees make you sniffle but like they already do things like that i mean i, I don't know i am not educated on fda testing but like to go into human trials there's a lot of things that are done before that i guess yeah. what they're saying is they could expedite those trials by just giving them to people they consider less than human is that their argument <laughs> yeah basically. yeah yeah okay. that's the ethical issue with it because, yeah, you're right. There is some testing that I, I guess is done on people at some point that doesn't have to be thought of as, like, torture. Yeah. Okay, well. <laughs> Was that a fun one? What a fun one to end on, Ben. I just love Ben's selections. All right, everybody. You're welcome. So have a great and wonderful rest of the week. Mm-hmm. We have something exciting coming tomorrow. The pastel creme drop. Shit, they're behind me. Oh, yeah, there. I put them all there. Okay, you already know. The Holotaco detectives have already figured out which uh, colors they are. There's what did six... they figure out? They figured everything. Literally everything. Did you tell them? No. <laughs> <laughs> I did not tell what them about tell the six them? new punchy pastel crimes that are dropping tomorrow. Punchy. I definitely didn't tell them. Mm-mm. We should watch Top Gun later. What? Why? Because he goes... How is that related at all to the sentence that just came out of my mouth? It just made me think about it. Why? <laughs> ben. I, are I you heard okay? punchy pastels, Tom Cruise, Top okay. Gun. What's your favorite shade? Top Gun? No. In <laughs> Top Gun Blue? No, that's not the name. Oh, it's of Top Gun English. Green, I forgot. That's not also not the name <laughs> of it. There is no shade named Top Gun to be clear. You don't have a favorite? Tell them your favorite, just the color. The name or the color? The color. Uh, There's a a yellow. (gasps) Yes. Of course you picked the yellow, you banana man. If you were dating on the internet, you would pose with a banana. (laughs) All my pictures. Or a bowl of hummus. One or the other. Maybe a banana dipped in hummus. No, hummus, people might worry about the smell. They wouldn't. I guess bananas smell a little nicer. Okay. All right, everyone. I hope you have a wonderful Taco Tuesday. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see y'all later. Bye.